The Bible has a lot of names for our enemy, the Satan, the slanderer, the deceiver, the devil. Uh, do you ever worry about that? Do you ever wonder uh, what it takes to defeat him? Uh, do you feel attacked in your own life? Today's chapter digs into how exactly are we as God's people uh, able to rise up and conquer the enemy, the evil one, uh, because we have a sure way to do so. Let's dig in. Revelation 12, 7 through 17. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the, the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because the, he knows that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for time, times, and half a time. The serpent poured water like river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. So this war in heaven. Uh, one question that often comes up is, when are we supposed to see this war? Some people think this is a, a call back to the very prehistory, pre life on earth times as if there was a war in heaven before uh, i don't this is not about that uh, for the main reason i think th the sequence of this part of the story chapter 12 we saw that it was uh, the woman who is a symbolic representation of israel gives birth to the son who will rule the nations and that's jesus Jesus, the, the dragon, tries to devour the son, but instead he is exalted in his death and resurrection, and then this war ensues. And you can actually see the, the, the way that they throw the dragon down, the way that they defeat him, they conquer him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That, to me, was what really convinced me that this is, the picture of this is what, 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 what happened in heaven when... Jesus rose from the dead. That's what chapter 12 is actually describing for us. What happened in heaven when Jesus rose from the dead? And because he rose from the dead, now the dragon is conquered by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Um, for, and this is to God's people now. Because we love not our lives even unto death. We took up our cross. We followed him. And Satan is now conquered. So this image of Satan here is really fascinating. We have... Uh, this great dragon, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan and the deceiver. Uh, and it's like every name that could be given to this evil one is found in this one verse here. The great dragon, and we can go much deeper into all of this, but the great dragon, that's the exact, that's the same word as the Leviathan, which, I mean, look up, for instance, Psalm 74 verse 14 but the leviathan was the great chaos monster or in job 41 1 that uh, in different ancient mythologies was the the great force of evil that had to be dealt with at the very beginning of creation uh, or the great serpent well that's kind of an easy one genesis 3 is the serpent who deceived uh, humanity from the very beginning and then the other words the devil that's the word for slander. The Satan is not a proper noun. It's actually the word accuser and the deceiver. So he is the great chaos monster, the serpent, the slanderer, the accuser, and the deceiver. And all of that, it poses a huge problem for us. Satan is not so much God's enemy as our enemy. He stands opposed to us. And 
If he had his way, we would have no place in God's presence. But because Jesus has conquered, and by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, Satan is now thrown down. He has no place in heaven. Uh, And so the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accused him day and night before God. Satan actually played a, a a, a role in God's cosmic order. So if you think of it like a courtroom, Satan was the prosecuting attorney. And so if we were sitting on the bench before the judge, Satan comes and he accuses and he slanders and he, and he points to all of our sin and rightly so, we stand condemned. So if we have an accuser standing in the courtroom, we don't, we're screwed because Satan can hurl at us all the accusations all day long of how often we fall short of the glory of God. And so if we have an accuser who stands in heaven before the mighty judge, then we have no hope. But because Jesus has conquered, because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for our sins, that accuser has now been thrown down. He has no more place in heaven. Uh, That doesn't mean he just disappeared. doesn't mean he incinerated. Uh, He comes down. And so now there there is uh, a battle that's still going on. I think what's, what, we're just, what we're seeing in chapter 12 is, uh, so what is our life like now? Jesus has risen from the dead, but we're still here and we still have to battle out with darkness and evil and persecution and all of that. And, and the woman who is maybe here, the Israel and or now the whole people of God, right? But the, the, the dragon now says, well, I couldn't get to Jesus. I couldn't get to the Son, so I will just go ahead and, and continue to attack the rest of the people of God. The dragon becomes furious with the woman, and he goes off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. So here on the earth, in this scene, are still clearly people who are following God. The church is still present in this book of Revelation. The dragon is now thrown to the earth and he is going to continue to make war on the people who follow after God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. But we can conquer him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. There's just kind of take it one step further. So talking about this image of the Satan and so what happened if there was a battle and he was defeated, but he's still around. And uh, I guess I would say there, there's maybe two levels of what Satan can actually accomplish. The first one, and if, you, if we take time to think about it, way more important was this idea that he was the accuser before the judge. So if we stood before the judge and our accuser was right there next to us, all Satan has to do is point out all of our sin and we ha- we're a hopeless cause. There's no way that we're going to be acquitted because we, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But in Jesus, his death and resurrection, the accuser has now been thrown out of the courtroom forever. He has no place in heaven. And so the the ultimate threat from Satan has been defeated. If we are in Christ, we have no accuser. We stand uh, free. We are, we are forgiven. We are made righteous in this grand courtroom because we have no more accuser. He has been thrown to the streets. Uh, now he has to switch tactics. The second thing that the, sa- that the deceiver can do is now, like a serpent, continue to crawl around on the earth and try to attack the people that try to hold to the testimony of Jesus. So there might still be some kind of earthly attack. He might still try to slander us and deceive us and all of that, but not where it actually counts. He can no longer enter the courtroom and accuse us there legally but he can still attack us here on earth. He can still make us, he can still deceive us. He can still slander us. He can still make us ashamed. And so there is still a battle of sorts, but it's, it's a lesser battle. And I know maybe that just begins the conversation to try to understand the role of Satan now, especially in light of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. He has been defeated. He's been kicked out of the courtroom, but he still walks around the earth trying to deceive and attack the saints of God. Um, but again, we'll just end with a, the high note that we hold, we conquer him every single time by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. <laughs>